If you've watched anime at all in the past decade, you're no doubt familiar with the concept of isekai anime, or anime in which some normal guy gets whisked away to a magical fantasy land. They have, after all, been literally everywhere. But just why do anime studios keep cranking these shows out one after another? Cynically, I think a lot of people would say that it's a combination of two factors. One, that weebs are a bunch of sweaty, lonely losers who crave escapist fantasy, and two, that a lot of isekai stories are creatively bankrupt and very easy to write. Indeed, many of the lower quality isekai shows rely heavily on very generic, one-dimensional characters and uninspired cookie-cutter fantasy settings. A lot of people have already discussed the stylistic or story-driven elements of why isekai is so popular as a setting. For instance, by having the main character be transplanted into a different world, it makes world building significantly easier, allowing the viewer to organically learn about the world rather than having it delivered in some unnatural exposition dump. But understanding why isekai are so prominent has a lot to do with the fundamental nature of the light novel publishing industry and how it's evolved over the decades. For those out of the loop, a light novel is kind of the Japanese equivalent of the young adult novel in the West. They tend to be shorter stories that are targeted to people in their teens and early 20s, and generally feature very fun and colorful illustrations, while generally using less kanji. The modern light novel traces its existence to earlier Japanese pulp fiction stories. Yes, that pulp fiction. This genre of literature gets its name for the low-quality wood pulp they were published on. Up until the 2000s, light novels tended to be fairly traditional fantasy or science fiction stories. Some of the most famous light novel series from the 1980s and 1990s are Guin Saga, Slayers, and the inexorable Legend of the Galactic Heroes. The first two are fairly traditional fantasy stories, while the latter is the preferred science fiction story of snobby, greasy, fedora-wearing anime fans everywhere. Most of these early light novels tend to be a lot less otaku-y, if that makes any sense. You could easily picture a story like Legend of the Galactic Heroes being made somewhere that wasn't Japan, in a way that I don't think anywhere except Japan could have produced in another world of my smartphone. Aside from the light novels that got really big like the aforementioned three, there really weren't that many anime that adapted light novels from this period. The change towards light novels, that we might scientifically refer to as weeb shit, really began in earnest in the late 1990s and early 2000s of works like Fullmetal Panic, Shakugana no Shana, and Zero no Tsukaima. Also, the Dot Hack franchise, which is sort of the symbolic forefather of the contemporary trapped in an MMO genre, was also released around this time. However, I would argue that the major turning point for the light novel industry really happened with the release of The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya in 2003, and especially when the anime adaptation aired in 2006. Looking back almost 15 years later, it's kind of hard to understand just how big of a deal Haruhi was during the mid-2000s. I can make an entire video just talking about Haruhi and its effects on the anime industry. Despite being one of the giants of the industry today, when Kyoto Animation picked up Haruhi Suzumiya, they were a relatively small and unknown studio. The wild success of Haruhi would propel KyoAni into prominence. The reason why Haruhi was so wildly popular comes down, in large part, to it being in the right place at the right time. Haruhi really did come out at this incredibly opportune time in the history of the anime industry. The early 2000s was the height of the Moe bubble, something that Haruhi itself is very self-aware about. 2006 was also around the time that video sharing sites like YouTube and Niku Niko Doga really started becoming popular. However, that's not a discount the quality of the original source material. The original light novel was incredibly good in its own right. Haruhi is reflective of this generation of light novels who grew up themselves watching anime, and thus becoming well versed in the conventions of the medium. The stories and characters of Haruhi are very much a self-aware play on the tropes of the genre. You have this mysterious transfer student, the big titty moe character, the quiet girl with glasses, and the deadpan serious protagonist. The anime adaptation, on its own merits, was perhaps one of the most innovative and consequential works ever to be produced, and has become a central part of otaku culture. 
Famously, the episodes of the anime aired out of order, which generated a lot of intrigue. The anime is full of 2000s cultural references, like the episode where they solve a murder mystery on an island, and Haruhi makes all the Phoenix Wright poses. And this isn't even mentioning the Hare Hare Yukai. Imagine how popular the Chika dance from Love is War was, and multiply that by 1000. If you were on YouTube in 2007, you've probably seen that dance. The massive success of Haruhi Suzumiya is both a light novel and an anime, where they pushed the adoption of light novels into the mainstream of otaku culture. So where does Isekai fit into this picture? As I mentioned earlier, the Dot Hat franchise is probably one of the first modern Isekai, so to speak. But following in the footsteps of Haruhi, the mid-2000s featured a lot of high school-centric light novels. The Japanese scholar Eiji Otsuko refers to this quite blandly as the era of anime slash manga realism. Works like Toradora, Bakemonogatari, and Baka and Test all came out during the mid-2000s. But the big consequential change during the 2000s was the wide-scale adoption of the internet and cell phones. This sounds very quaint today, but for all the Zoomers out there, back in the 2000s, cell phones and the internet were really these hip and poppin' new technologies. In parallel with the increasing popularity of light novels was the advent of the Keitai, or cell phone novel. This was a genre of fiction that was primarily authored by and targeted towards young women, which rose to prominence during the early 2000s. Chapters of Keitai novels would typically be distributed directly to readers via the internet or text message. This process of independently writing and distributing your own work via the internet also quickly gained popularity among light novel authors. Traditionally, if you had an idea for a light novel, the way you got it published was by sending your manuscript to a publisher and hoping they liked it. Light novel imprints would often host literary competitions to solicit manuscripts for publication. But during the 2000s, it was becoming increasingly popular to just release your light novel onto the internet without getting it formally published. And this is what leads us to the one and only Sword Art Online. For years before SAO was formally published by ASCII MediaWorks, it was released by Reki Kawahara as a web novel on his personal website. As I'm sure you're all aware, Sword Art Online and its anime adaptation in 2012 have been a massive commercial success. Much like how after the success of The Hunger Games in the West, there was this massive influx of dystopian YA novels, a similar thing happened in Japan where the light novel market continues to be flooded with isekai in the wake of the continuing success of Sword Art Online. This glut of isekai light novels has been especially fueled by self-published web novels, specifically on the website Shousetsuka ni Naro, or Let's Become a Novelist. Isekai tend to be very popular on this website. Log Horizon, Konosuba, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, ReZero, and The Rising of the Shield Hero all got their start on this website. This creates this positive feedback loop where because isekai are so popular, that encourages people to write many isekai stories. And that the more isekai stories that come out, the more fans get drawn to the genre. And then thus, more people want to write these kinds of stories, and the cycle continues ad infinitum. In fact, there's an entire light novel publishing imprint that exclusively publishes from works of Naro. Because light novel publishers and later on anime studios are a lot more likely to pick up properties that have built-in fan bases from when they were light novels, that's a large reason of why there's so many isekai anime. Specifically in the case of anime, what a lot of people don't understand is that the primary function of anime adaptations is to drive sales to the original written properties. Significantly more money is made from selling volumes of manga and light novels they were selling DVDs and Blu-rays. For example, the Haruhi light novels have sold somewhere in the ballpark of 15 million copies. There's literally no way that revenue from the anime can ever hold a candle to that. This is why we're probably never going to get a season 3 of Haruhi or Spice and Wolf. You're not going to go out and buy the light novels if you know how the story ends. Because the primary reason for anime adaptations is to act as glorified advertisements and to drum up brand awareness, in a lot of cases, the actual quality of the adaptation really doesn't matter, which is why even though there are a lot of good light novel adaptations, there are a lot more really shitty ones. 
if you just farm out the animation to some overworked, underpaid Chinese sweatshop workers and rely on garbage CGI, you could produce a 12 episode anime series pretty cheap. This isn't really a problem intrinsic to isekai, it's more of a problem with anime adaptations in general. And since that there's a lot of isekai light novels, that mathematically means there's gonna be a lot of shitty anime adaptations of all of those isekai light novels. So if anyone ever asks you why there's so many isekai anime, you can tell them that it was an inevitable part of the rise of the internet, and blithely inform them that technology is a curse because it gave us Sword Art Online.